I'm Bob Norton, uh, president and founder of Airtight Management. This segment is on business model design, and it does depend on some other segments having been viewed by you, including the fundamental principles and the overview of Airtight Management. So if you haven't viewed those, you might want to go back and view those first because we will be building on some concepts in those. So this will be redundant for some of you, but it's important to understand airtight management as a framework, and we do want this to stand alone as much as possible. So airtight management is a holistic, closed system to help companies install all of the things they need as they get bigger. It's actually the first ever proposed standard for the internal management systems of small to medium-sized businesses, and it has six modules. And essentially, it becomes an organization's operating system, and it goes across all department boundaries and all disciplines, as well as from the very top uh, executive suite to the bottom lowest level employee in the organization of, of contribution. And so it's very important to understand that for it to work properly, it is, is an operating system that has to be used throughout the business. That's not to say it couldn't be used in a division and add value, but it wouldn't be as much value as if it was used uh, everywhere in the business. So hopefully you're familiar with this. We have this in here as a reference. Five stages of development. One of the fundamental principles that has to be understood is that many things have to change as you go through these different five stages of business development. And you'll learn about that in greater detail in other modules that talk about the problems with growth and how the various systems apply. But a simple analogy is a boat, where a small speedboat is kind of an analogy for a startup. Very easy to do, small number of people, communications are easy, risks are low. You can turn the boat fast, etc. But as you go up that spectrum and become a stage two, three, four, five company, you can see that the CEO or the captain of this aircraft carrier or fleet has a completely different job than the person down here. And of course, for someone to grow from here through these, they'd probably need years and years of additional training because of the greater complexity as you get into larger, faster growth companies. But you need the most innovation and speed and, uh, and risk in an early stage company. So the six systems are strategic planning, PAMs, performance accountability and merit system, dashboards and business intelligence, which is the, the key performance indicators of the business and getting those right because people will focus on them if you make them visible and and you can project and, and notice things happening much easier. Strategic budgeting, which is a holistic budgeting process that's more opportunity-driven than cost-driven. Uh, process management, which is documenting and improving processes constantly so that they can be trained and scaled. And then human capital acquisition and development, or HCAD for short, which is about finding, hiring, and keeping the best people, as well as growing and coaching them so they have a performance culture that I call a Darwinian meritocracy, a self-adjusting, growing culture. This is a diagram of the interaction of the various systems of airtight management. And you'll see that strategic planning, the mission, the values, the goals, the high-level strategies, are something that you update on a quarterly basis, but do intensely on a one-year basis. That strategic plan feeds into the monthly rhythm of operating a business. So this is strategy, and this is operations, or more tactical level. And so that's the management by objective process, the dashboards, the month-to-month -month adjustments and steering of the business. And of course, the people, the culture, the policies, your recruiting and everything else is a separate area. And again, all of these have to go across all of the various areas of the business, whether the sales, marketing, finance, product development, operations, whatever divisions you might have in your company. This is 
shows you some of the risk points as you go from stage one to two and two to three. Lots of companies get stuck in these overlaps because the management team or the founder doesn't know how to shift gears and they take previous success as evidence that they know how to do everything when in fact they need to do things differently uh, in the future. Easy to say, hard to do. This is a pie chart and there's a whole module on this, but I'm just going to do a quick overview to understand because this is important in the concept of business model design. There is a free article at our website uh, called The 11 Required Elements of a Vision. It's about a 15-page article describing this in detail, and I'd recommend everyone get that. But essentially, uh, the 11 elements are the concentric rings of strategy internally here and tactics of what's happening on the outside level or the execution level and then of course a core idea and that core idea may be your intellectual property it may be your target market combined with certain things that you've innovated on and and, and changed but whenever you invest in your core idea you know that you're building equity in the business and have probably multiple ways to sell and market that to different niches and those sorts of things so there's not a lot of risk if you stay, you know, stay focused on your knitting, as they say, and, and stay in that core where you're constantly building your expertise and your intellectual property, probably, and barriers to entry to protect what you're doing and be the best at that. As Jim Collins would say in Good to Great, you know, the hedgehog concept is really in here. It's what you can be the best at. No provides a, uh, a financial formula that works and your team is constantly getting better and, and staying in the leading uh, edge of that area. So the idea that is that a complete vision, which is part of the, the business model holistically, has to have answers to both the strategy and tactical levels for each of these areas of the business. Of course, this pie is divided equally, and some businesses might have less marketing and more sales or finance when you look at it in terms of people or financial resources spent against them. But the idea is a successful business has all of these 11 things figured out in its vision and its strategic plan, which are interactive with each other. You can't change your price point or your marketing or your finance without having an impact on the other areas of the business. So these red arrows symbolize that interdependency and in that if you change a strategy in marketing, it's probably going to have a ripple effect through the rest of the business of things that have to be adjusted and changed, which is why communications and a regular update of the strategic planning process is always so necessary. Wikipedia has what I would call um, a fairly conventional, but I'd also call it wrong, definition of what a business model is. Uh, it talks about the business model being your value proposition, your target customer segments, your customer relationships, your value configurations, as they call it, the different value components you bring to the marketplace and the target customer, uh, your core capabilities, your partner network. That sounds pretty broad, but what it doesn't say is that you really need to think about in your business model the key processes for your marketing, your sales, how you deliver to the customer, your innovation, where is your unique selling proposition, where is your, uh, your financial controls, your management processes and infrastructure. Every business model is going to have different needs and every company is going to have different designs of all of these things. And when you make a decision about some of these things, it has to, you have to drive it in your vision and your business plan and strategic plan of how you're going to implement those things better. And so what I would caution is that because a lot of this common thinking is developed by people that aren't very sophisticated out there, you know, the last thing you want to do is go to YouTube and Wikipedia to learn about state-of-the-art uh, management uh, philosophies. There's a lot of common knowledge out there. And as with everything on the internet, anyone can put anything they want out there. It doesn't mean they're qualified or sophisticated or even have experience in your kind of business, not the industry, but the stage of development. 
Um, so here's the four components that the best business models all have. And we have a list of Fortune 300 companies, 22 of them on the right there, because if those are companies you know, you can probably name these four components that make them successful. And so just having this as a checklist and holding this up against your business model or your strategy is going to be helpful in figuring that out. And I'll do a couple of the examples of the things on the right of, of those companies and what their four components are. But the four components are a sustainable differentiated strategy. In other words, something that you can maintain an edge with. That might be by having patents. It might be by having better execution. It may be by controlling certain distribution or focusing on a certain niche of customer that has special needs. Whatever that is, that's sort of the core of that vision pie of where you're going to invest, knowing that you're going to get a return on that investment eventually. Um, the targeted niche is very important. You have to have a vision in your mind of who the ideal customer is in a business model because there are so many competitors in this world and it's so easy to find them with Google searching and anything else that people want a specialist in whatever they do. So just about every small company should be focused on a target niche. They might add niches over time and broaden to vertical markets or even horizontal markets as they become very successful. But even hugely successful companies like Salesforce.com and Oracle and other horizontal companies typically started in a, a niche market to establish a beachhead, get their first revenue flowing, uh, and then use that revenue to expand their product portfolio or their niche portfolio of markets that they were targeting by expanding their product offering or making it more specialized. The three, uh, the second, uh, or third rather component of the best business model is strong messaging. Uh, the world is filled with clutter and advertising is getting less effective uh, with every day. There's a great book called The Purple Cow about that. If it's, you know, The Purple Cow comes from the concept you know, if you're driving down the street and you see a purple cow, you're probably going to tell someone. And word of mouth is the best advertising. And since advertising costs continue to go up and advertising results continue to go down because of fragmented media, in fact, today uh, it costs $300 million, what used to cost 8 to $12 million in the 70s to do in terms of hitting everyone in the media space of TV because of all the, the hundreds of channels. You used to buy, be able to buy, you know, what's called block advertising, and you'd get your ad on the 6 o'clock news on ABC, CBS, and NBC, and virtually everyone that watched TV would see that new product introduction, whether it was a potato chip or a drink or whatever. Today, getting that amount of reach to that number of people is $300 million or more of advertising, so more than 30 times uh, what it used to cost. And so niching and going after a very small market with a targeted message is important, and even all the largest companies do it. So you've got to have messaging that's going to break through to that niche and resonate with them. It's got to grab the target market, ideal customer's attention, and it's got to get across the unique selling proposition of that company in seven words or less so that people instantly know what you do and where to sort you in their mind as a company.